we now have all the algebra that we need to work with equations with radicals in them. To start, let's think about the equation square root of x equal to 2. Now, if we think about this, well, what does 2 square up to? That's going to be a 4. This is going to be the template for what we use when we solve equations with radicals. The idea, if I have square root of box, box can be any complicated expression, this is equal to a number c. Now remember, square roots don't produce negative numbers, so I'll need c to be greater than or equal to zero for this to be sensible. Then I could strip off the radical if I just square c on the other side. So, we think of this as this operation of squaring both sides. Now, why does this work? Well, this is just putting things into rational exponent form. Square root of box just looks like this inside of parentheses, and then if I square both sides, that's just going to cancel out with a half, and then I'm just left with box all by itself. We do the same operation on the other side, squaring, and so c will go to c squared. So this is completely sensible. Now, if we want a checklist for solving equations, okay, business as usual, first we isolate and then we solve. So our first step will be a cleanup step where if we want to get rid of fractions or parentheses, the goal is going to be to try to get the square root all by itself. So that's our main step. We isolate the square root. Then, I'm going to square both sides, so that's what we just talked about. This will remove the radical from the equation, hopefully, and then I'll just solve what's left over, and then we check our work. And here we should always check our work because we can't rely on radicals behaving completely nicely. Let's look at this example. So I have square root of 3x minus 5 equal to 2. What do we do? We square both sides. So I'll take the radical off. On the other side, we're going to square. So we'll have 3x minus 5 equal to 4. This we know how to do, just basic arithmetic. We'll add 5 to both sides. I get 3x equal to 9. Divide both sides by a 3. We get x equal to 3 for our answer. Then we should check our work. So I'll put the 3 back in the original equation. We get 9 minus 5, so that's square root of 4, and then that's going to go to the 2 that we were expecting. Next example, we have 3 square root of 2x minus 3 plus 2 equal to 5. Remember, our primary goal is to isolate the radical, so this is going to be our usual arithmetic. First, we'll get rid of the 2, so I have minus 2 to both sides. We have 3 square root of 2x minus 3 equal to 3. I can now divide both sides by 3, which will bring this to radical 2x minus 3 equal to 1. And now we can do the business of squaring both sides. So I drop the radical to get a 2x minus 3 equal to 1 squared, which is just 1. And now this is basic arithmetic. To proceed, we just add 3 to both sides. I get 2x equal to 4. Divide everything by 2 gives us our answer of x equal to 2. We're not done, we should check our work. If we put a two into the original, then I'll have a four minus three in the radical, which is a one, which just turns this into three plus two, which is the five that we were looking for. For one, which is a little bit more complicated, and will also the check will be very important here, Let's try 3 plus square root of 3 minus x equal to x. We have x's in two different places, one in a radical, one that's not. We shouldn't be put off by that. We should just follow the checklist. So the checklist says isolate the radical. That means we're going to push the 3 to the other side. So I'll add minus 3 to both sides. And now we just go ahead with our procedure to get rid of the radical. It's isolated. I can square both sides. So once we do that, what we'll do, okay, so the radical goes away, we square the other side, so this is an x minus 3 in parentheses with a square on it. That's really just, okay, what's a square? We just take the object and multiply it by itself. 
So that's x minus 3, x minus 3. If we FOIL that out, we'll get x squared minus 6x plus 9. This is equal to 3 minus x. And now, if I want to solve this equation, okay, our procedure is, we get it in the form x squared plus bx plus c equal to 0. Factor if we can, and then get our answer off of that. So let's see what we get. We'll have, okay, I move the 3 to the other side and the x to the other side. So that's an x and a minus 3. We have x squared minus 5x plus 6. I factor. That's going to factor into x minus 2 and x minus 3. Setting that equal to 0, we'll get the equations x minus 2 equal to 0 for a 2, and x minus 3 equal to 0 for a 3. So these are our potential answers. Now, when I go to check my work, if I put a 2 in here, okay, we're going to have 3 plus radical 3 minus 2, so radical 1 is 1, of a 3 plus 1, which is a 4, but that's supposed to be equal to a 2, so this is not going to work. So I'm going to have to throw away the x equals 2 solution. On the other hand, when we go check the x equal to 3, when we put that into here, 3 minus 3 is 0, so I'm just going to wind up with 3 equal to 3. That's a true statement, so that solution I want to keep. That's the basics. Let's consider some variations on the problem. For instance, let's take square root of x plus 1 equal to square root of 3 minus x. Now, we've got two radicals. They're both isolated. Is this going to be a problem? Well, if we put this in rational exponent form, okay, we know we've got something to a half equal to another something to the half. We just do what we did before, we'll square both sides, and then that's conveniently going to get rid of the radicals on both sides at once, leaving us with, say, item 1 equal to item 2 underneath the radicals. So for this example, what we'll do, I just pull the radicals off, solve, okay, this will be basic algebra again, we'll get x equal to 1, and then I check by going back to the originals, we have 1 plus 1, square root of 2, equals 3 minus 1, square root of 2, so that checks out. So, a little bit different, but more or less the same. What about other nth roots? So, let's look at a cubic, although this is going to point the way for any nth root. The rule we'll use, what we're going to change, if I have the cube root of box equal to c, to get rid of the radical, I'll just have box equal to c cubed now. And so for an nth root, you're just going to flip over, take your c raised to the nth power instead. Again, this becomes clear when we put things in rational exponent form. Well, let's look at an example. So let's take cube root of 2x minus 4 plus 2 equal to 0. As usual, we're going to isolate, so I'll put the minus 2 on the other side. If I use our rule, we're just going to drop the radical, but now for the thing on the other side, we're going to raise it to the third power. So we'll get a minus 8 instead. Now we're doing basic algebra, okay, so we work through that. I'll add 4 to both sides, which will give me a minus 4. 2x equal to minus 4, we divide both sides by 2. We have x equal to minus 2 for our answer. Of course, we check, so I'll take the minus 2 and put it back in the original. So we'll have the cube root of, okay, minus 4 minus 4 is a minus 8. Cube root of minus 8 goes to a minus 2, okay, minus goes to minus. I add 2, and we get the 0, and so our answer checks out.